tell me, oh no, you shouldn't learn how to do sew machine wigs. Those things fall apart. Bitch, you a liar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back. And if you are new, I am Essence Forever Essence. I am new here, but I just hit 500 subscribers and I got 10 videos. <laughs> okay, so we're getting a little cozy. We're getting a little <laughs> comfortable. So go ahead and subscribe because you're going to see me around. <laughs> I'm really excited. Thank you for subscribing. But I want to get right into this video, okay? So, as most of my subscribers know, which if you don't know, now you know, I make custom wigs on the sewing machine and, you know, I'm a custom colorist, all that good stuff. Going into the wig business and, and into the sewing machine wig business, it was so much that I didn't know that I felt like I wanted to express to you guys and let you guys know before getting into it or if you're into it and you need some encouragement, some motivation, or some tips, the truth about it, if it's worth it, all of that good stuff. So please stick around if you want to hear my rant. One of my main things about truth about wigs, because I have been a wig maker for so long, trial and error before I knew about measurements and everything, I want this to be a very big deal. And today's session, whatever, sis, if you are making wigs and you have clients you need to learn how to take down measurements and how to transfer those measurements onto your wig cap, period. Everybody's head is not the same size. You have to make that clear. It's just a lot of things that can go into measurements. I just feel like measurements are really crucial. And let me just show you. So this is my smallest wig canvas head and you can get them all on Amazon. I get the Jex brand, GEX, whatever. I get this brand, I think they're like $30 a piece. This is crucial. You need to have at least, I would say a 2021, a 22 which is average, a 23, if not a 23.5 which is what I have. And you can sometimes adjust the cap on like if you're a 21 and a half and you only have a 21 head you can adjust the cap down or up to make your cap smaller or bigger so that's why measurements are really crucial because say you don't have that certain canvas head you can still kind of adjust where you need everything to be at if you have those measurements that you need this is my 21 and I'm going to show you my biggest one I have which is a 24 and this is a 24. The top of the head is way bigger versus smaller. And the sides and everything is way bigger versus smaller, if you can tell. This is an average 22. Even the 21 and the 22 is a huge difference. Please trust me with that. I'm sorry. If you have a 22 inch canvas head, and this is the most average, that's why it's so beat up you need a smaller one and you need a bigger one please you will not get the same measurements with this one average um, canvas head period i'm trying to make a 21 and a half inch wig on a 22 inch canvas head and that did not work it had to be on a 21 because that circumference that dome part of the back of the head and that top of everything it's just everything with it is a different size like just trust me i already had my canvas head prior to going to um my sewing machine class or whatever but um i didn't know how to transfer the measurements but listen to me even if you have the different size canvas heads if you don't know how to transfer those measurements over you can still have too big and too small wigs. The temple to temple that goes around your head, those are not always the same if our hairlines could be from here. I've seen people with this big of a forehead, so that means they have a lot of head space, you know what I'm saying? Versus a big forehead and their hairline front to nape is smaller. Excuse me, if that makes sense. So let me give you my journey of my sewing machine, why I started and everything. So I was making handmade wigs since 2016. I was making a lot of wigs a day, all right? And I started to get a lot of strains in my wrist. And long story short, because if you do hair or if you do anything manual with your hands, you pretty much know what tendonitis is. 
but I did catch tendonitis in my wrist, in both of my wrists. And it was because I was doing handmade wigs for so many time, for so long. Just doing so much stuff really strained my wrist so bad. Like, I wouldn't wish that pain on anyone. One of my first wigs that I did whenever I did come back working, I just had a client that I found out, she came to my house to pick up her wig, I found out she knew how to do wigs on the sewing machine, but she knew a lot about my wrist, and she just told me like, yeah, if you learn the sewing machine, that will help your wrist a lot, take a lot of the strain off your wrist because you're more so just pushing a wig through versus putting a lot of motion into the needle, into doing stuff all day and she told me she was taught by a, a more Janelle which I don't know if you know but if you're in the sewing machine business a more Janelle teaches classes FaceTime classes all types of stuff like I had already been asking a more Janelle if I could do a hands-on class whenever she would like do a tour or something but she wasn't really coming to North Carolina anytime soon and I didn't know anyone that could do that could teach me hands-on I feel like if you're learning sewing machine wigs I do feel like you need to be a hands-on learner I took a sewing machine class and mind you it was my client and I just kind of discovered that she took a class with a more Janelle well she did a face time class or whatever the case yeah I was taught the measurements but when it comes to me doing the wig on the machine I just kind of feel like I was more so self-taught and I, I don't want her to hate me but I just that's just when looking for a wig class just be aware of what all you're going to take from it and ask as many questions as you can so you will know what it is exactly how long it is how detailed it is everything are you going to leave having a full wig done are you going to know how to do the top of your wig all of that good stuff so let's talk about my class when i went to a sewing machine class i just knew i was going to get a full wig done and i just was going to be on the road you know that's what i thought you think that okay they're doing the wig in 30 minutes they're saying they're doing a wig in 45 minutes so so will you but that's not the case this was what I made in the class. This is what I took out of the class. Um, yeah. So this is the way that I did. And these are the lines um, I learned. I did learn the measurements and I learned how to do the line. We did a little thing on the paper to kind of test out some strips. And then we just did this and then it was done. So mind you, the top isn't done. Um, I did bring a closure, but all we did was kind of outline it. And... Um, did the lines and everything I'm very naive and I'm very like oh well she said I know everything so I'm good or she said I'm good I'll get it so you know but when I went home I literally didn't know shit and not only that everything wasn't really installed in my head I didn't have any notes or anything like as I was learning it was just pretty much like you learn and go to the next thing so it's like damn what the fuck did I just learn because it's not recorded it's not picture taken down I think I took one picture and I have one video like videos that she sent me actually of a more Janelle that she paid for that she sent her she actually sent those to me of how to do the line so whole time I could have just paid for a FaceTime class and really did everything with the more Janelle but anyway when I got home I didn't know what I was doing when I got to the top of the wig it was terrible I wish I had Shania's wig so I can show you what my first wig looked like it was trash this literally had to teach myself like she taught me the basics but it's just like no when it came to actually making the wig I really fucked up so many wigs trying to get it right in parts I stretched the cap, in parts I shrunk the cap, it was a mess, like a mess, a mess, a mess. And honestly, I cried. Honestly, I was so frustrated. It took me like, of course, I want to say like six hours to make that wig. So I'm just like, no, nah, I can't do this because I was making handmade wigs in two hours. But at the time, I really had tendonitis in my wrist, so it was nothing I could do, you know? So I had to just stick it out and figure it out and I think she just was getting annoyed with me because I kept asking little different things and at the time we did try to collab first and only collab with hair just was terrible like, so at the time we were going through that and I really needed help with the with the wigs and she told me to hit her up about anything with any help or whatever but at the time like I said with the whole collab shit just didn't go right and 
yeah, she stopped responding. Sure, that was mostly it with my class experience. But I said that to say this, just because you take a class does not mean you're coming out of it a pro. In classes, you need to be taking videos of everything. You need to be writing down everything. And this is why you should learn. Now, when you start off, it may be a lot of hours. You may be frustrated, literally feel like throwing your sewing machine to the fucking left. But don't give up because ultimately sewing machine wigs are very much nicer, neater, nice and neater, nice and neat, whatever. They last longer. Con to the last longer, you do cut your webs. You do cut the webs. I have seen people be able to fold it over. I haven't got to that yet. But um, I personally haven't seen a huge difference in me cutting my webs. It lays flat as hell. Your hand stitch will not be able to make the wig as a secure as a machine wig. I had somebody try to tell me, oh no, you shouldn't learn how to do sewing machine wigs. Those things fall apart. Bitch, you a liar. And you was scared for what I had coming because honey, this shit ain't going nowhere. Them tracks is not loosening up if you're doing it right, sis, period. Another thing is, again, I went from doing wigs from two to three hours to 30 minutes and you will too. Keep staying consistent. You keep practicing you know you got better with your handmade wigs over time so why don't you think you will get better with sewing machine wigs threading is so much easier the needle and everything i just remember i used to for my handmade wigs I threaded seven needles and still had to thread more needles by the time i get to the top of the wig that shit used to strain my wrist and i'm here to tell you sis you ain't gotta thread no needle no oh that takes out so much time trust me just patience i just don't got time so, with the sewing machine, you're able to make the ventilated caps, and I actually have one here. But I kind of was told how in my class, so it's just like, when I do this, I'll pretty much be teaching myself all over again. Yeah, right. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it. But this will be, I will be doing this over the summer. But what this is, is some of them have these around the entire thing. But you can only do this on the sewing machine, I'm pretty sure, for security and for the measurements to stay. But what this is, is you literally will be able to sew on the um, across this. And this is paper, like little paper. And after you sew it on, on the lines, it'll take that completely out. And everywhere you see that plastic will actually be open. And you'll see the tracks across, but it'll be open for you to put your fingers inside of the wig. And you'll be able to do that with sewing machine wigs, which I think is really, really, really beneficial because... One, your hair will be able to breathe. It's ventilated, so hence the name. And it's very breathable. It's lightweight. It'll be able to oil. It'll be like a sewing, honestly. It'll be like a sewing. And um, yeah, I just think it's better. And also, those caps come adjustable. Going back to the measurements, you do need um, to get into the regular size mesh dome caps as well as the extra large. When it comes to 23 inches and up, you will definitely need a uh, extra large. So some things I didn't know about the sewing machine that I actually just kind of found out when mine's kind of decided to break. Um, you want to make sure you have a great heavy duty sewing machine. I've uh, literally seen girls uh, see me do sewing machine wigs. So they literally went and bought like a $20 sewing machine at Walmart or literally Dollar General to um, try to say they were making sewing machine wigs and I'm just like sis that sewing machine ain't gonna do shit for you or that wig period you should have came to me and asked me what type of sewing machine I had but uh, I'm here today to let you know what machine I was using ho so you can go buy it off of Amazon actually I think it's discontinued but yeah so clearly people have been using the brother or the singer so I didn't really know what to look for when buying a sewing machine so I just went and I asked a more Janelle and I just kind of seen what she was using she was using the brother CE8100 and it came with like 120 plus stitching um it's computerized, which was one of the main reasons why I thought I needed it. And um, all this stitching, it's like 120 stitching, all of that good stuff. And you see it's very lightweight. And um, yeah, it had a built-in stitch before that broke and all of that, okay? So let me tell you about the sewing machine because I'm learning, okay? Because one of my pros that I watch had it and it was computerized. But I just actually learned when it comes to this heavy duty stitching that we do, 
what I got out of that machine was it breaks. It breaks. You spend almost $200 on it and it breaks. So be careful. Make sure you have a good machine. Don't go off of what whoever has because I still was looking at everybody's pages and honestly, it says heavy duty, but that shit is plastic and I don't want that. So I didn't know until I broke my, I kept breaking my machine and recently I broke it to the point where I had to get a whole new one. This one time when it needed to really be fixed, it was just like worth more or just as much as the machine. So I was like, well, let me just buy a new machine. So the place I actually went to was McKinney's sewing, sewing machine something something and come to find out when I went to go get a new machine they do sewing machine classes for free anytime you purchase a sewing machine at their uh, company which I thought was really good and I, I'm pretty sure they're not the only place he was so happy and so helpful to me. the one that I have now which my wrist hurt I'm not about to pick that thing up it's heavy like it has a handle for me to actually lift up and stuff he said, Be, that's what's going to last you. My That machine is metal. Like I didn't even know it was plastic machines and metal machines. You know, you don't need all that stitching on that machine. That 120 stitches, that for what? You're just making wigs. You're not a fucking, you know what I'm saying? You're not an embroiderer, embroidery, whatever. It has less built-in stitches, but overall, the power of it, the power of the machine just everything. I can tell this is a more heavy duty. You know what I'm saying? The one I have now, it's like so many little differences that just really means everything. So I'm super happy with my machine, but that's very important for you to have a great machine. You need to do your research. You need to compare. You need to make sure you're getting the best out of your money because for $50 extra, my machine is 100% better than what I had before. And there's, oh, my new one also isn't computerized and I thought that was like a necessity but it definitely that shit don't matter. You do not have a better machine than anyone else if you have computer or not. It's literally the same thing. Like, And another thing, it is very, a lot of YouTube videos telling you how to do pretty much anything and everything on your machine. So if you have a specific question, just type it in Google and they have it. And again, the place I went to and bought my sewing machine in store actually had sewing machine classes for free. So just see about going in store about your machine. Talk to people. Tell them what, what it is you're trying to do. All of that. You know, like just actually talk to someone that knows what they're talking about if like you're a beginner and don't have any clue. Because I literally did not know. I'm going to study and research everything before I ever decide to do a class just so you literally walk away from my class knowing everything. Is it going to take time? Yes. Is it frustrating? Yes. Could you cry? Yes. I've cried a couple times but it is definitely worth it. You definitely should get into it. Yeah. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Make sure you comment if you have any questions. And yeah, thank you if you're here all the way to the end. Comment if so. Thank you, sis. And um, yeah, see you guys later. Let me know what you want some more videos on. I'm up for anything. Okay. Okay. <laughs>